after studying national cultures in the 1970s, in the 1980s, Dutch cultural psychologist Git Hofstede returned to the study of culture. But this time he was looking at organisational culture and identified six dimensions which account for different styles of organisational culture. The first of the dimensions of organisational culture that Hofstede identified was from a process-oriented culture to a results-oriented culture. At the one end, we have a focus on efficiency, effectiveness and predictability, whilst on the other end, we're much more open to adaptation, agility, change, where getting a better result is more important than getting a predictable result. The second dimension was from a job-oriented culture to an employee-oriented culture. And in the job-oriented culture, employees feel like their work is the most important thing and the organisation only exists to employ them to do their job. Whereas in an employee-oriented organisational culture, employees feel that the organisation really does care for them. That the employees are a valuable resource and an asset to the organisation. In many ways, this dimension is very similar to McGregor's Theory X and Theory Y model. The third dimension is from the professional to the parochial. In a professional culture, people tend to behave differently at work to the way they behave in other aspects of their life. They put on their work hat and they behave in a more formal, more structured way, perhaps. In a parochial culture, people come to work as themselves. The way you see them at work is very closely representative of the way you would see them in any other situation or context. As a result, parochial cultures tend to be a lot more informal, whereas the professional cultures tend to have a high degree of formality. The next dimension goes from open systems to closed systems, and this is about how welcoming an organisation is to new members. In an open system culture, new members feel immediately welcome. They feel like their presence is eagerly anticipated and there's a lot of work behind the scenes to make them fit in quickly and easily. Whereas in a closed culture, it can feel like it takes a long time to be a proper part of the organisation. It feels like the weight of tradition is bearing down on us and until we've been here for long enough, we're not really part of the team. The fifth dimension ranges from tightly to loosely controlled. In a loosely controlled culture, people have a lot of freedom and flexibility around things like dress code, timekeeping, administration, the non-core aspects of what we do at work. Whereas in a tightly controlled culture, there are a lot of rules to follow and people are expected to do things as they are expected to do them. These expectations reflect on things like behaviour, discipline, work performance and even procedures. But thinking about procedures takes us really towards the spectrum from normative to pragmatic organisational cultures. In a normative culture, people are expected to follow very rigid policies, procedures, practices, processes. Strict rules and regulations govern everything and people do not have the flexibility to adapt what they do and how they do it according to their own judgment. Whereas in a pragmatic organisational culture, the opposite is true. What matters is the results you get and within a certain framework of rules and regulations, how you achieve that is up to you. How an individual organisation will orient itself on these six dimensions is largely a matter of two factors in particular. The first is the type of organisation it is, its industry or sector. Governmental organisations will be very different to entrepreneurial startup tech organisations, which in themselves will be very different from financial institutions. And secondly, of course, there is the national culture or the regional culture within which the organisation sits. This will, of course, have a profound impact on 
the choices that organisations make and the cultures that they inculcate. It's important to note that this work of Hofstede was based on a very small sample of, I think, around 20 organisations. So we have to take it all with a pinch of salt. It sounds compelling. It sounds plausible, very reasonable. But the research base is very low. And over the years, a number of other academics and consultants and authors have added in their ideas for other cultural dimensions which are at play in organisations. Here are some examples. There's means-oriented versus goal-oriented. This is really about the how being more important or the what being more important, how we do things or what we do. Quinn and Cameron, of course, introduced us to the external versus internal orientation. Are we focused on our customers and our suppliers and the world around us? Or do we have a greater level of concern for our internal processes and procedures and, let's face it, politics? Is the focus local or professional? Do the members of the organisation, the workers, identify more strongly with the business unit within which they, are, they work, their division, maybe even their leadership and managers? Or do they identify most strongly with their role, their professional skill set? their expertise, the things that they do. What is the level of innovation within the culture? Is the organisation highly stable and resistant to change and innovation? Or is it one that embraces the need for change and is highly innovative and creative? What is the sales culture of the organisation? Is it oriented towards short-term profits or towards long-term relationships with customers and therefore focusing on high quality of service and high standards of interaction. And finally, what is the level of the culture of safety? Every organisation will say that it puts health and safety first, but some organisations really do build all of their processes and all of their procedures around safety. Organisations like mining and exploration and drilling and petrochemical industries always seem to me, to put safety at the core of everything they do. So Hofstede gives us a framework, and other people have added to it, to analyse the organisational culture along a number of dimensions. In many ways, it is similar to the work of Cameron and Quinn, except where Cameron and Quinn looked at two dimensions, Hofstede found six, and other people have added to it. The truth is that just as with national culture, organisational culture is a multidimensional, complex mess of different things. And there is a lot to it. And remember, what Edgar Schein tells us is that the depths of organisational culture lie in the shared assumptions. And those shared assumptions are many and complex in themselves. That's why we get so many different dimensions of organisational culture. Please do give a thumbs up if you like this video. There's loads more great management courses content to come, so please do subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of it. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. In the meantime, keep learning.